I'm George Johnson in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and my book is The Cancer Chronicles, Unlocking Medicine's Deepest Mystery. I'm going to read from Chapter 9 of the book, which is called Deeper into the Cancer Cell. It takes place during an annual meeting of the American Association for Cancer Research. These are huge meetings, some 16,000 to 18,000 people all gather in the same place to talk about the latest developments in the cutting edge of uh, cancer research. I'm going to describe uh, something that I stumbled onto about midway through the conference. One evening during the meeting, I came across a crowd of scientists streaming into a hotel ballroom, exhausted from a day of absorbing and exuding information. Inside, lavish buffet tables were placed strategically. Roast beef with Oregon blue cheese, roasted chicken breast caprese, miniature crab cakes, Southwest chicken empanadillas. Bartenders at six stations offered copious pours of good wines. It was the annual reception of the MD Anderson Cancer Center. Since Nancy and I had gone there one sad January for a second opinion, the institutional logo had been changed. A slash had been added to the word cancer. I wondered what marketing fool had come up with that. It seemed tacky and from the point of view of so many of cancer's victims, cruelly optimistic. From the Anderson affair, the crowds flowed onward into a larger ballroom for more drink and dessert and dancing, courtesy of the AACR. A soul band lit from behind with a blue and red spotlight was playing old Smokey Robinson tunes as the singer carrying a wireless mic tried to coax people onto the dance floor. First there were two couples dancing, then half a dozen, and by 10 o'clock there were 50, swirling like a whirlpool and pulling others onto the floor. As I walked back into the hallway, the rhythm had slowed and the lights had dimmed. The singer was singing Killing Me Softly, an old Roberta Flack song, which is exactly what cancer doesn't do. I should say something about the excerpt I just read. The Nancy I referred to was uh, Nancy, my wife at the time. Uh, we're no longer married, and it was just about... Uh, well, it's been 11 years ago now that she was uh, diagnosed with a very uh, vicious and rare type of metastatic cancer, and she had to go through surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, all of this. And, and throughout this, of course, we were both uh, reading everything we could about cancer. Yeah, it was difficult to decide how to write the book because, you know, I'm a journalist, so I'm used to being the fly on the wall, and I'm most comfortable hanging back and looking from afar and, and describing what unfolds. So with this book, it was different in that I wanted to use my wife's story as kind of a, a narrative thread through the book, a kind of structural backbone to hold the um, sections together and to really guide my search through cancer research. They estimate that there's all oh, about a trillion cells in a human body. And during any one second, some four million of those are dividing. And every time you get one of these divisions, the cells have to copy all of their DNA, the entire genome from one to the other. So naturally there's gonna be mistakes and uh, these mistakes are mutations and if just the right combination of mutations accumulates, you get a cancer. So this happens in any multicellular creature. It happens in some more than it happens in others, but of course it would happen to dinosaurs. But still, when I heard that there was actually a field called paleo-oncology, I was just, just amazed. I mean, mutations happen all of the time. It's inevitable because we live in a world where things that are complex tend to become more disorderly. We live in a world that's dominated by entropy. The older you get, the more your cells have divided and the more and more likely it is that one of them is going to get that combination of mutations that results in a cancer. So really what struck me was that the most powerful carcinogen of all is really entropy. I mean, you have to die of something. So to me, I came out hopeful of what research can do to help younger people with cancer, childhood cancer. And I was just so heartened to learn that great progress is being made with um, curing many childhood cancers, or at least managing them and letting these young people have good lives. For the most part, there isn't anyone to blame. Something, these things just happen and then you know, it's just part of life and part of entropy. Sad thing, but, you know, it can help to know that. This is the third time I've been on the shortlist for the prize, so 
Of course, I hope three will be the charm, but it's just great being among six such fine books.